hey, hey, insert number what, we four? Four, sorry. Brief break while I had my groceries delivered, so when did that, came back. Um, section 96, now section 96 is still to the Curtain Saints, um, and this is about getting the land. Now remember that 95 and 96 are actually before 94, um, and so that'll make a little more sense to you. Um, this actually ended up being a, a farm, what does it say in the year, the French farm, got a first name anyway that was the farm that they wanted which they wanted to build that temple on the Kirtland temple um and to obtain that John Johnson sold his farm so you know keep in mind John Johnson and say thanks to him because one of those people that greatly can you know contributed to be able to have that um land to build the temple on um so this is the land that I said in the last insight that when they had it, this is where Hiram went out and just started clearing it and because I don't, I don't know what else to do, but I can go do that too. When we ask what does the Lord want us to do, sometimes it's just a matter of going and doing. Um, yes, yeah, so this was a conference of the high priestess. I was talking specifically about the land and just, just a few other really good things in there. So let's just move that a little. There we go, it's a bit better, eh? Alright, so, uh, verses 6 and then... I've written down 27, and, and I know that's not going to work. I think that's section 97, 27. Yeah, it is. Um, so, this is section 96, verse 6, and then section 97, verse 27. Uh, and again, verily I say unto you, it is wisdom and expedient in me that my servant John Johnson, whose offering I have accepted and whose prayers I have heard, under whom I give a promise of eternal life, inasmuch as he keepeth my commandments from henceforth. And then 97.27 says, Nevertheless, let it be read this once to her ears, and, and her is talking about Zion, that I, the Lord, have accepted of her offering, and if she sin no more, none of these things shall come upon her. So both of these, now that, that second one's talking more of what a Zion people's going to be, but both of these are illustrating that our offering is accepted to the Lord. Our efforts, our um, our best that we can do is accepted by the Lord. Uh, and this goes back to um, insight number two, when I was saying that sometimes the Lord asks us to do stuff that we don't understand yet, or we can't see why yet, um, and our efforts are absolutely accepted by the Lord, and he will create like that, that quote that I had from Elder Maxwell, he will take what we put in, our dependability and our availability, and he will make it into capability. Um, it's pretty cool. So, if you want to see that, go see insight number two. So anyway, your offering is accepted by the Lord. So how comforting is it to know that your best efforts are accepted? You don't have to be perfect at it. You don't have to be a skilled master laborer at the thing that you're doing. Your efforts are accepted. My efforts in doing this, because this is certainly far from the best teaching that you could have on Come Follow Me, but my efforts are accepted. And someone somewhere is going to hear this and go, wow, I've never thought about it like that before. Or, gosh, Lorraine delivers it in a way that, you know, just really speaks to me. Or whatever, because we all have that. We all need a certain way and a different way. And, and whatever our efforts are, are accepted of the Lord and by many others as well. We are our harshest critics, I've got to say. Um, the only measure of our effort, um, you know, of if it's best, like we say, our best effort, the only measure of if it's best, that's up to the Lord. Um, and He's super supportive, He's generous, and so helpful. So His accepting of our best is not our best, like what we think, it's what He decides. Um, and how do you know that? Well, you don't. If you've got that relationship with him, if you actually are giving your best on any given day for whatever that means, like when I'm sick sometimes, I don't get a whole lot done. It's getting up, showering, maybe making sure the washing gets done and deciding to do a really quick dinner or no dinner and just have toast or something um, with our lovely gluten-free bread, which is really not that delicious. So something simple, right? Um, it's those kind of things. Maybe that is what my best is for that day. Um, my best artwork. I love doing artwork. I cannot draw that well. I, I copy um, other people's illustrations and I sort of mix them and make them better. And But they're not my complete originals. But that's okay because I'm not selling them. I'm not claiming they're mine. It's my artwork for my enjoyment. Um, my photography is certainly not the best in the world. But I try and make it something that's 
beautiful that shows the gorgeousness of this world and put beautiful spiritual thoughts on it so try and make it that is my best effort so many many things the best is not determined by me it's determined by the lord um yeah so don't be overcritical of yourself because we are after all our worst critics is what i said we are the harshest on ourselves more than anyone else is we're going to be harsher to ourselves so be kind to yourself give grace to yourself because you're actually doing a whole lot better than you think you are um, this life is so hard, so hard, so just try, um, the Lord fully accepts your offering, um, what I really like is this quote from President Hinckley, um, he was a great one on talking about being kinder to yourself, and especially being kinder to others, but he had such a grace and, oh, sense of humor, I think, he just had such a happiness to him, such a joy to him, and I, I really love that about him, but he said, please don't nag yourselves with thoughts of failure, do not set goals far beyond your capacity to achieve. Simply do what you can do in the best way you know how, and the Lord will accept your effort. Because sometimes that's all we can do, especially as we've seen in this last year or, or a bit, year and a half now, is to do what we can do in the best way we know how. And other people will say that we did it wrong, or that it wasn't good enough, or and we might say that. But we did what we did the best way we knew how, given what we had at the time and the situation we were in. So don't be so hard on yourself. Don't nag yourself with thoughts of failure. It's okay. Remember here, we just focus on doing better tomorrow. We don't worry about what went wrong in the past. We've repented of that and it's done and it's gone. We look at what we're going to do in the future and how we're going to try better tomorrow, today. That's all it is. That's all we've got to do. And the Lord accepts our offering. And that's beautiful. And these scriptures really illustrate it. Um, that one in, in 6, well, 27. Section 97, 27 is so beautiful. But in 6, just that, you know, John Johnson sold his entire farm, put his family into having no money so that the saints could have land for a temple. That was his all in faith. He was wholly in. And it was beautiful. And he was blessed for it. Um. It's, it's such a gorgeous thing and I just to say that those prayers that I have heard it's so nice to know that he hears our prayers right individually hears our prayers and de definitely can tell you that's true having having had some interesting prayers last night and feeling better today to be able to do this so thank you thank you to my heavenly support and thank you to you guys all right stay around we're going to have Final finish up insight number five. We're going into section 97 to see what he's got to say to the Missouri Saints about Zion because this is so important and it's so important to us right now and right now, today, for us. Stay there. See you soon. <laughs>